All right, let's be honest. While anime heroes are great and all, we watch action anime for the villains. You know, those super evil, crazy, and morally gray antagonists who do whatever they want and charm us with all their character layers and their tragic origin stories. Yeah, those guys. Of course, we love the good guys and want them to win in the end, but there's no denying that a good anime villain can make a series oh so much better. Some of the best action anime villains also happen to be the strongest, and it's for this reason that we're gonna rank the greatest anime villains of all time from weakest to strongest. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's start off with something of a one-off villain, but one who became rather memorable. Muscular of My Hero Academia. This villain's moniker is rather literal, as his power allows him to become more muscular, generating muscle fibers all over his body to turn him into a hulking beast. In fact, Muscular's muscles are so huge that they can't be contained by his skin, leaving him a weird, exposed muscle fiber mess. However, as strong as he is, Muscular isn't much compared to other villains in our rankings, both because he's a bit lacking in the brains department, and because his strength can go away, as it's only a temporary power-up. So, Muscular comes in at number 20 in our rankings of the strongest villains in anime. Next up, we've got the homunculus of Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. Artificial humans with crazy abilities. Named after the Seven Deadly Sins, the homunculus are incredibly powerful villains, serving as the main antagonists for a majority of the series and working under the main villain father. The seven homunculi all have their own unique abilities, as well as a shared ability to regenerate from any injury thanks to the Philosopher's Stones that act as their cores. However, as powerful as they are, the homunculi's ability are low scale in comparison to other villains. So, we're ranking them at number 19. Now, we have the Chimera Ant King himself, Meruem of Hunter x Hunter. Meruem was born with all of his abilities right out of the gate, sporting insane strength, impossible speed, crazy durability, and plenty of Nen-based abilities. His transmutation ability, as well as his ability of metamorphosis, which lets him basically evolve for any situation, standing as two of his most dangerous powers. So why did we rank Meruem so low? Well, for one thing, it's a bit tough to compare the power levels of one anime's magical ability system to another. But we'd say that Hunter x Hunter's power levels are a bit on the tamer side, so in comparison to other villains, Meruem ranks a bit lower, placing him at number 18. You know how when you were a kid, you'd ask your friends what superpower they wish they had, and that one friend would say the power to have all the powers. Yeah, that's basically All for One of My Hero Academia. All for One has the ability to steal and transfer quirks to others, making him both dangerous as a fighter himself and as the leader of a villain league. But we're focused on his individual strength, and with all the quirks he's stockpiled and all the combinations he's developed, All for One is easily the strongest villain in My Hero Academia. Next up, we have what we think is an interesting one, Vegeta. Specifically, Vegeta when he could still be considered a villain. We're looking at Vegeta's highest power level while he was still a bad guy, so around the Namek and Frieza sagas. At this time, Vegeta was still looking out for himself, even if it wasn't about power as much as it was surviving. So, he was still a bad guy in some form, and by the end of the Frieza saga, Vegeta was pretty dang strong. Sure, he wasn't a Super Saiyan, and he still didn't stand a chance against Frieza's final form, but Vegeta was no weakling. However, Vegeta's power as a villain is nothing compared to his current strength, which is why his villain era power ranks him at number 16. Bringing up the top 15, we have Father of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Father was once a weird black vapor thing in a flask that called himself a homunculus. However, after a massive transmutation, that homunculus became an immortal being capable of great alchemic transmutations. But his alchemy and immortality aren't why we included Father in our ranking. Nope, that would be because in the climax of the series, Father absorbed God and became an all-powerful being. It might seem weird to rank a teenager with psychic powers higher than a dude who absorbed the power of God, but anyone who's seen Akira knows that Tetsuo Oshima is one of the strongest villains in anime. Of course, he didn't start out as a villain, just a bullied kid who eventually gained psychic powers, powers that grew stronger and more out of control as the film's plot unfolded. 
In fact, it's arguable that Tetsuo is the strongest psychic in the film. Heck, even when his power started to mutate him into a weird, giant, baby monster thing, he was still a destructive force that outclasses everyone below him. One of the biggest antagonists of Naruto is also one of its most powerful villains. We're talking about Obito Uchiha, one of the masterminds of the series. From his many Sharingan abilities to his various transformations and jutsu, Obito proved that he wasn't the low-ranking weak ninja others thought he was as a child. In fact, once Obito sealed the Ten Tails Beast within him, he transformed into his most powerful forms. In these forms, Obito displayed great strength, immeasurable speed, and the ability to control powerful orbs capable of shooting projectiles and creating great weapons. On top of all of this, Obito was able to heal nearly flawlessly, making him one of the strongest villains in anime and the holder of the 13th spot in our ranking. If Obito is powerful, then Madara is basically a demigod, since he's arguably the strongest villain in the Naruto franchise. In fact, Madara is so powerful that Obito pretended to be him to instill fear into others. So what contributes to Madara's powers? On top of his incredible physical prowess, mastery of countless jutsu, and powerful Sharingan eyes, Madara was also able to control multiple tailed beasts throughout the series. On top of this, Madara has been shown to have insane power without the ten-tailed beast's power, fighting for days on end and fighting the entire allied shinobi forces practically by himself. Because of all this, Madara sits at number 12 in our ranking of the strongest villains in anime. Sosuke Aizen of Bleach checks off a lot of boxes on this list of anime villain tropes, but despite some fans not caring for the latter half of Bleach's writing, there's no denying how powerful the series' main antagonist became. Aizen's basic abilities include speed so great that enemies can't tell if they've been hit right away, strength so powerful that it's rarely outmatched, spiritual powers that's equaled by very few, a complete mastery of spell attacks, and a Zanpakutu with the ability of perfect hypnosis. Combine all of this with his insane genius intellect, and Aizen is easily one of the strongest characters in anime. One of the coolest parts of One Piece is the fact that it incorporated Blackbeard into its lore. The infamous real-life pirate serves as a villain in One Piece, and in terms of power, he brings up the top 10. The reason we say this is because Blackbeard is the only person in history known for having two devil fruit powers. The first of them is the Dark Dark Fruit, which gives Blackbeard the power to create waves of darkness that consume everything near them. Blackbeard's second power was stolen from Whitebeard and is known as the Tremor Tremor Fruit that allows Blackbeard to create earthquakes and tremors, which combined with his other powers makes Blackbeard the 10th strongest villain in our rankings. Blackbeard is incredibly powerful, there's no denying that, but there's one villain in One Piece who definitely outmatches him, Sakazuki. There are a number of factors that contribute to this, the first being that he has access to massive amounts of marine resources. However, his physical abilities are also incredibly powerful, as he has displayed superhuman strength, speed, and durability, even without his devil fruit power, which lets him turn his body into magma and shoot magma in massive waves. If all that wasn't enough to convince you that Sakazuki is the strongest villain in One Piece, then how about the fact that he was responsible for the death of Ace? Yeah, we think that more than qualifies him for the number 9 spot in our rankings. Kill a Kill is, in a word, weird, but that's just part of the heavy stylization that makes it such a great series. For example, the main antagonist, Ragyo Kiryuin, works for alien clothing known as Life Fibers and seeks to cover the Earth in them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty out there. Regardless, because of her relationship with the Life Fibers, Ragyo is one of the strongest villains in all of anime. On top of the ability to sew her body back together and recover from any injury, Ragyo is also incredibly strong and skilled. However, what put her in the top 10 is her final form, so to speak. The Shinra Kokutsu, a life fiber uniform that allows her to shapeshift into any form necessary for combat, and increases her strength to impossible heights. All this, combined with her ability to control others through life fibers, puts Ragyo at number 8 in our rankings. As Dragon Ball Z progressed, the characters got stronger, and the bad guys proved to be greater threats. While Frieza seemed like an impossible-to-beat opponent, when Trunks showed up from the future, he destroyed him in an instant. 
However, the next main villain, Cell, wasn't as much of a pushover. In fact, Cell in his perfect form stands as one of the strongest characters in Dragon Ball, and one of the strongest villains in anime. Not only was he created to be the ultimate warrior, with the DNA, abilities, and power of Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, and Frieza, but he showed he was an incredibly skilled fighter during the Cell games. Top it all off with the fact that Cell's Saiyan DNA allowed him to go Super Saiyan, increasing his power further, and the sheer amount of power it took to finally defeat him, and Perfect Cell sits at number 7 in our rankings. If Cell was powerful, then Majin Buu and his subsequent forms were on a whole different level. In fact, Buu is so powerful that despite being sealed millions of years prior to his awakening, his terror and strength were known all throughout the universe. As for which of Buu's forms is the strongest, we'd say his form either during or after his fight with Vegeta was his peak power. The reason we say this is because Super Buu had absorbed the powers of so many warriors at this point that he was likely at the same level as or close to the likes of Beerus. His power, ruthlessness, and ability to absorb the power of others putting him at number 6 in our rankings. You know a villain is big, powerful, and dangerous if his name is dropped casually throughout the story as a source of danger, terror, and destruction in history. Which is exactly the case with Zeref of Fairytale. Zeref eventually proved to be the force of destruction that legends and history stated him to be, and it's all thanks to his immense magical power and mastery of the dark arts. A prodigy of dark magic, Zeref knows countless spells of varying magic types. One of his most powerful being his ability to give life to objects and create life himself. Add to this his immortality, superhuman strength, speed, and durability, and Zeref stands as one powerful anime baddie. However, what really puts Zeref in the top 5 is his death spells that create orbs, waves, blasts, and pillars of dark magic that literally kill anything they touch. Remember earlier how we mentioned that Frieza was eventually surpassed by the power of Cell and eventually Boo? Well, that ended up changing when Resurrection F and the Dragon Ball Super adaptation of it rolled around. You see, Frieza was just naturally incredibly powerful, capable of destroying planets without so much as breaking a sweat or having to train a single day in his entire life. It was for this reason that Frieza was eventually surpassed by other villains. However, when he decided to actually train, his power increased exponentially and he acquired his golden Frieza form. With this form, Frieza became the strongest Dragon Ball villain once again up to this point capable of not only beating all the villains that came after him, but also able to take on both Goku and Vegeta after they acquired godly Super Saiyan forms. Alrighty, now it's down to the top three, and who's better to start with than Lord Boros of One Punch Man? There are a lot of reasons to consider Lord Boros powerful. He's incredibly strong, stupidly fast, highly durable, capable of crazy regeneration, and is able to transform into an even stronger form. However, what really puts Lord Boros in our top 3 is the fact that One Punch Man is a shonen satire series. Because One Punch Man is making fun of action anime by presenting a protagonist at his absolute strongest, and Lord Boros is the only villain to actually present a challenge for this character, whose whole point is to be too strong, then that villain is probably incredibly powerful. Of course, arguing who is and isn't the strongest in One Punch Man is sort of against the point of the series, so maybe don't read too much into our rankings. Earlier, we stated that Frieza worked his way back up to the strongest villain of Dragon Ball, adding that it was only at that point in the series. The reason we say this is because there was another villain that eventually surpassed him in power, Fusion Zamasu. As many may know, Fusion Zamasu was the result of Zamasu with an immortal body fusing with an alternate timeline version of himself who switched bodies with Goku. These two warriors were already powerful godly beings, especially Goku Black, who had Zamasu's godly key and all of Goku's power in transformations. Add to this the power multiplier that results from a Potara fusion, and Fusion Zamasu stands as possibly the strongest villain in Dragon Ball. But the mixing of mortal and immortal bodies did end up turning him into goop, so maybe we're wrong there. At last, we've come to the number one strongest villain in all of anime, and we doubt it's who you thought it would be. It's not some crazy strong warrior or any kind of fighter for that matter, it's the Anti-Spiral of Garen Lagan. The Anti-Spiral is essentially an omnipotent god who wishes to wipe out all of humanity from the universe. The Anti-Spiral is powerful for a number of reasons. The first being that, as we just mentioned, it's omnipotent and all-powerful. It's godly status allowing it to create literally whatever it wants. From illusions that capture his targets in never-ending dreams to a giant galaxy-sized robot meant to challenge Tengen Topa Garen Lagan. 
Although the anti-spiral was beaten in the end by the power of human stubbornness, or something like that, it's still the most powerful anime villain in our book. So, there you have it, the greatest anime villains ranked from weakest to strongest. Did we leave anyone out? Do you agree with our ranking? Which anime villain is your absolute favorite? Let us know down in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more anime videos. Thanks for watching.